<laughs> so now I think what would be really cool is if we went under the skin of failures of the flesh, if you're open to that. Absolutely. Cool. So same way that we've been doing with every goddamn band that you've been in session for, or maybe you've listened to other episodes. You know how this works, man. Let's go ahead. What, what do you want to do? Are we going to go into the woods and find a shrine like we did with parasitic embodiment? Are we going to go into a library again? Like, what do you want to do? Where do you want to go? <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just kind of here, you know? Right. Okay. Well, because Infectorium, right? Because of the, the the darker, more decrepit aspects and the fact that, well, most of the time that you've been on the show, you've been in a cemetery. You've been walking around a cemetery because you're a little edgy orc boy. Let's go into a cemetery. And for whatever fucking reason, we decide to uh, unearth um, the belongings of someone. There happens to be a book. And the first page is kind of this old, decrepit, like almost fuzzy texture, right? Like when paper really starts to deteriorate, but it's not fading, it's not crumbling to ash. It's just fuzzy. You see a fuzzy paper sheet with the cover, with the album cover, with the EP cover for Failures of the Flesh, right? And mm -hmm. maybe the old English, the shiny metallic old English mm -hmm. font is not on the front, but you know what this is. There's a reason you're there to unearth this book. It maybe was left behind by one of your loved ones or someone who is connected to a secret effort that you were also involved in. They're like, well, be prepared to dig up the book. Dig up the book and and bow, like, you know, embrace the failures of the flesh, whatever the situation may be. So you find the CP cover and, well, you open it. Or you go to the back, right? Because we have to turn the back and see the little summary. Maybe even more specifically, because this is your fucking EP, right? You're the one who wrote on the back. And more or less, you're just looking at that to remember what happened during the EP, during the events that would culminate into this EP. What would be the chunk of text on the back of your book on Failures of the Flesh? Uh, <laughs> man, um, I'm gonna use an excerpt, two excerpts from two songs off the EP, um, to describe this the best way possible. So, Failures of the Flesh, um, it was a very personal album for me, despite the fact that, like, how what anybody feels about you know the the quality of this or the quality of that or whatever and how anybody feels about it it was a very personal thing for me because like some of the subject matter i talked about even if it was almost in code essentially um i may have said certain things that were obvious there may have been some certain audio clips that were in certain songs that had actually been from actual videos where you know were personal things that i'd actually input into these songs but um Two of the main things um, that I would put on the back of that cover would be that I'm sorry that I was the cancer pumping through your veins um, and that this will never be the same again. And the second insert would be, um, I'm sorry that I was the disease, but I was the one that you needed. I like that. That and is the best way I can put it. Right. And obviously, you know, there, there are, there's so much, there's so much raw sadness and, you know, just kind of negative shit that happened. And more or less, I can kind of piece things together because of the, the short time that I've known you and because of what we personally talked about. So why the, those two statements, they, uh, they match together really well. They regard you as the disease, but every story where you talk about a disease it's like to a certain degree it was necessary right it was necessary it had its place in that story so why compare yourself to a disease um it's not that i personally feel that way myself it's that when 
certain people come into your life, whether it be family, platonic, uh, romantic, it doesn't matter. Um, certain people will come into your life and there comes a point in certain aspects of this where it, it, it may be right, it may not be right, it may be great, or it may end up turning very toxic and very sour and south very quickly. And one of the things that I'm very guilty of um, is even if it wasn't entirely my fault, you know, it takes two to tango and almost every situation it takes two to tango. Um, even if it wasn't necessarily my fault, I still shoulder that blame. Um, and that's been a deep rooted thing that I've done even since I was a child is I will shoulder that blame for things that maybe I shouldn't, but I, I still do because it's, it's just ingrained in me to be this way. And there was, I mean, like, it, it's so sneaky because like, um, there's so many things that I snuck in with this EP that like people don't even get. And if I broke it down right now, like it would make more sense. But, um, even the date it was released had a meaning. It had to be that day. It was a particular date that was relevant to what this EP was about, um, at least a good portion of it. Um, and it, it, it's, there was a lot of things that I put into this EP and a lot of things I was very personal about that, like, if you know me and you know my history, um, especially the last five years, you, you, you know, generally speaking, what, what a, some of this context is about. Um, right. Some of it obviously was, you know, me writing feelings out some of it was things that like flow together with that certain thing to play into the story um but it was probably the most raw thing that i've ever released at this point to date um and i've released some pretty personal shit, but nothing quite to this caliber of things to like something that literally shaped me as a person how i am now um and, and left me with scars that i will never forget right uh, and that's part of the reason, once again, why, why it was even called failures of the flesh, you know, because when I broke down everything, I was like, you know, I failed this situation. I failed this, I failed did this and this, but I'm only human at the end of the day. So failures of the flesh. Yeah, exactly. There's only so much you can do in the flesh and there's only so much you can try to escape and avoid before you just kind of end up running into walls and you have to live through failures. You have to live through times that kind of balance you out as a human being like even me i've done some pretty stupid shit i've done some pretty heartless shit but for the most part it is to such an insignificant scale and tier mm -hmm. that it's like dude i've done some fuck shit but i've more than made up for most of that I've more than made up for most of that stupid shit sure. that I did back in like junior high. Like all you can try to do is atone. All you can try to do is repent. And then you don't even have to be a monotheist to use those words, right? Like right. you can, because most of us, because me and um, Finn at least, we're, for, we're from here in the United States. Like we all know what those words mean. It means to take accountability for your bullshit. Like right. if you fucked up, you fucking make up for it and you make sure that the people and things and places and times that were affected in a bad way, you make sure that you make things right where you can. And then where you can, well, let go let bygones be bygones. You gotta move on. You cannot right. be a ghost, you can't be a phantom and be stuck in the past right. for too long. And, so and, and yeah. that's that's an important aspect too. Like, like where you're, you're, you're going in with that is like accountability, but like accountability goes both ways too, you know, especially in situations that are, that are so tense or, you know, two sided on things where, you know, you get two heads that are just together, you know, and they're both headstrong individuals. <clears throat> it goes both ways. Like it, it kind of goes back to Newton's law. You know, every action is going to have a reaction. So if somebody's reacting a certain kind of way, like it might not have been the proper way to react to that. But there's something that caused that reaction, whether it be in that present moment or the past or something that caused that to happen at that point. And as long as, you know, it, if it wasn't the proper way to react to certain things, the person that had the reaction apologizes, you know, for, for reacting the way they did and, it, and holds that accountability for that, then I feel like it's it's only necessary at that point, you know, that the other person involved in that situation would also hold that accountability. Like, you know what? Maybe I could have done X, Y, Z 
better as well, you know, and yes. and that's and that's the thing about the human experience that a lot of people don't fucking get is like everybody wants to and the thing it's most common in unfortunately it is romantic entanglements and relationships where people want to say well my ex is crazy or this girl's crazy or this boy's crazy or whatever but like there's certain aspects to everything like and none of us are saints no matter how much we try to be none of us are fucking saints we all make mistakes we all do things that we regret doing it's a matter of holding ourselves accountable for the things that we do and the things we've saw, said and did and trying to grow from that situation and be a better person whether it's with that same person or with someone new or on our own we have to grow and that was that was basically what this album was to me it, it's ironic this conversation because that's what this album was to me was a growing experience and putting my past behind me in certain situations behind me that I needed to put behind me and let go of because I had been holding on to so much emotion from that, that I needed to let go of. Yeah. Whether it does well, it does well. If it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, I, I needed to do it regardless. So yeah. it was something that I needed to let go of. And in the particular couple of situations it had to do with like, you know, once again, I wasn't a saint either, but I took accountability for what I did and what I said and whereas the other person decided to go a different route and refused to acknowledge anything so i mean yeah. it, it is um and this was my way of kind of getting it out of my system where i'm like i won't ever think about this again right right you know yeah. after of course after we do the podcast <laughs> well, well no i mean like in general I, I even now a lot of things like i said like you were asking about the catch up and stuff what i've been doing like a lot of things have changed in the sense of like i'm doing mentally better there have been a few times where I've, you know, obviously we're human. We get bummed out about certain things and certain aspects, but there's been a lot of things I've, I've grown stronger from in the process and especially yeah. getting this off of my chest and a lot of, a lot of the subject matter. Um, I know what's, you know, I know what's coming up at some point here in this interview and then podcast, uh, you're going to ask about contexts of songs and like meanings behind things. And like, and there's, there's a deep rooted meaning behind every one of them. Um, Aside from the intro, okay. So even, even the fucking intro, honestly, even, <laughs> um, the, intro. even the intro, yeah. um, there was a meaning behind certain things we added to that, even though there was no lyrical content. But um, I'm, I mean, regardless, I'm, I'm jazzed to get this out and 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 get it out of my system to where I'm like, you know what, it's been talked about, it's done. Leave it in the past where it needs to be. Move forward with your life. Um, you know, pick your fucking head up and keep moving. Yeah and here's another beautiful thing that i kind of wanted to like bring to attention with the podcast no context necessary um i remember when the cp first came out and i'm like hey blind with that are failures of the flesh <laughs> like that's hey. actually that's actually really fucking clever and i love it yeah like honestly and <clears throat> I, I thought about it and i'm like Thing in an alternate dimension right now because like i i was um i have an idea i ha there there was a there was an idea a plan to bring a group amazing group of people together um quoting nick fury fucking i'm such an mcu nerd um no i was thinking of doing and to be honest i'm thinking of doing the same thing in in this reality um having these different eps that members of blind future members of blind compose they write and basically it reflects upon their greatest failure it re it reflects upon their greatest obstacle that they had to overcome to be a better person and i'm like wait a minute <laughs> um but that's that's besides the point um For sure. there's, there's there's no connection um at, at this time at least it's just like it's it's cool to see how similar our brains work creatively speaking lyrically speaking so we have the reason for the album title or the ep title we have the main concept behind it we have two excerpts from two different songs reflecting upon your own perspective on the matter and how you try to humble yourself as a person um in the moment right throughout the course of events so now we dig into these six tracks 
starting with Enteritus. Can you hear it now? What do we got going on here, bud? So, Imperatus was the intro. Uh, actually, a riff from uh, one of the songs, one of the other tracks that we had taken and slowed down the intro for just to make the intro for the album. Right. And, uh, we did add some stuff into it that, that wasn't obviously wasn't there initially. Um, the fire crackling the chains and the woman laughing and the woman laughing yeah. was probably the most significant thing about it because what this album has to do with yes. uh, would have been relevant to that like laughing at the trauma that was inflicted um so it's it's that's pretty much the gist of that there's not really much much else to that it was just a little clever thing that we threw in there just to kickstart the album off you know and what do you know what enteritus means? Um, <laughs> so it's actually from what I understand, my uh, my producer was the one that <laughs> because he created the the instrumental for it essentially. Um, uh, it's if I recall correctly, I want to say he's. Ooh, okay. The the connection cut out for a second, so I, I missed the last part. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, from what I understand, uh. From what he told me, it's Arabic, I believe. Oh. Okay. Um, I'm not really entirely sure. I would have to ask him about it. Um I know when we when we when we started doing it, um, and started naming stuff, it uh we knew what the definition of it was, but at the time I'm I like drawing a blank because it's been a little while. <laughs> so um, I can't the exact answer, but I'm pretty sure um, it was Arabic. Um, Interesting. So in that case, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and use Google Translate here real quick. Let's see if we can pull something up because I think that would be really cool. Um, so let's see, Arabic. I'm pretty sure. It is. Yeah. Is it Arabic? Um, hold on. Imperatus. Let's see, no. I, you know what? That sounds Latin. That sounds really Latin. It's like Imperatus. Yeah, somebody. You know. Latin. It is Latin. It uh -huh. is Latin. Sorry. For destruction. Mm. <laughs> destruction and disillusion. Ah. That that makes sense. That makes sense. All right. He uh. He's really big into like looking into deep things. Like, sometimes I leave the naming stuff up to him because he's he's that is, that's what this dude does for a living is like recording stuff and like he'll sit and he'll he'll get on the dark side of YouTube for like hours and I won't hear shit. Be like the next day I'll get a message <laughs> back like, dude, did you know like these fifty facts about whatever? It is? Like, I kind of leave a lot of things up because of that because like he's he's a really smart dude. He's really fucking. Clever, so that actually checks out. I let, I let him name a big portion of the things that I do. Okay. So then we immediately jump over to track two, which is convergence. Convergence. Oh yeah. Convergence. I cut out for a second. <laughs> the oldest track that I have on this album, I recorded Convergence um, back in 2022, and I had recorded it at the time I was um, still involved in a very toxic relationship at the time, and uh, I was sober at the time because I had been made to believe that um, that even if I came home from work and, and had a beer 
alcoholic because of that and I was out of control and uh, there's a lot of manipulation and shit during that time frame and a lot of really toxic behavior exerted towards me um, and which turn you know led to me really shutting down mentally um, one of the excerpts for that uh, the back of the album for the whole album I would say that like, comes from that and that was the line like uh, maybe I'm the cancer pumping through your veins all I know is it isn't the same um, and you know there were several things like that that were exerted in the song like uh, lyrically like the good in me has died macerated left behind cold and lifeless eyes set to survive um, you know it was a very heavy heavy feeling at the time you know feeling like I had to do these things because someone was in my head so heavily that like I had to be this person and there was a while there that I actually um, you know I actually believed certain things and about myself even that I didn't know were true or false or whatever or, or perspective and um, that's where the term convergence comes in you know like converging with yourself and, and becoming you know looking back at past situations it still makes it's still relevant and that's why I decided to use it you know like certain like I said certain lines or um, the other line uh, from it you know I can never forgive myself you know for who I used to be and, and what I used to be whether that was X Y or Z you know and that's kind of where that came into play fair enough yeah and it's it's a different animal when you are deep into a relationship because I mean I can't exactly say that I was ever being manipulated in this last relationship so disclaimer that's not what I'm saying to those who may be listening don't get the wrong idea um, my last relationship concluded um, because the person was just comfortable being in a darker place and I didn't want to be there with them you know I was trying to sure. help pull them out and you know it, it was just it was a little bit difficult to continue being there with them when they did not care to get out of where they were at all um, and that darkness like it started like kind of following me a little bit I'm like nope I want to unplug right now you know, you, you don't you don't want to to meld with that darker comfort. And of course, for me, my ultimate comfort, my ultimate peace is just I can't see anything level darkness. I can't feel anything level cold. And then, <gasps> well, silence without the tinnitus. <laughs> right, right. So, it of course, those darker things, those darker ideas, have always been my comfort zone because, well being in arizona being in phoenix where 90 percent of the year it's clear sunny days even during the winter um you have the monsoon that comes through and that makes things kind of humid and as the years progress it's humid with smog or dust we have our haboobs that come through which are giant just fucking farts of dust and sometimes rain goes through that and it turns to actual fucking mud rain it's so gross so I think over time, naturally, I felt and um, I developed an affinity um, towards just darkness. And it sounds so fucking stupid and edgy, but I, you know. I get it. I get it. <laughs> I get it it's like when you're when you're forced to be around sunny days all the time and very little, it's like actually rain is a miracle. Trees are a miracle. Of course, you just want to like disappear off into the woods, dude. <laughs> like, that's just gonna happen. <laughs> um, needless to say, it's it's never good to be in a relationship and feel like you're kind of losing your own personality in the process. That yep. shit is dangerous. So um, that's kind of like the the commentary I'll provide with that because I I you know what. No, I take it back. Not this last relationship, but there was one person in which her friends were even telling me, like, hey, she's trying to change you, bro. She's trying to control you. And this was in high school, dude. But she was, like, kind of this bubblegum personality, like, K-pop enthusiast and shit. And I was, like, a stoner metalhead listening to Asking Alexandria and shit. And, right. like, really the, the breaking point was me smoking weed with her friends without giving her, quote, a two-week notice as if me being in a relationship with her was a job. I'm like, absolutely not. That's this is not what I signed up for. And that's 
Um, she actually split things off because, you know, me and her friends collectively reacted the way that we did. We said, hey, that's not right. Like, I don't need to give you a two week notice to smoke weed. It's harmless. And these are your friends. I'm not smoking with random women who, for some reason, find me that charismatic and want certain things with me. It's like, nobody's going <laughs> to want that with me. So you're fine. You, you, right. have, you have no competition. But nonetheless, um, be, just because of the way that they were living at the time and because of the mindset that they were in at the time, um, I think that they were just trying to have higher standards in life. And therefore, they wanted me to just exponentially climb with them when there wasn't really anything wrong with the life I was living. It was just very strange. But I mean, I'm, I'm glad it didn't get worse than what it was. And this was in high school. You know, this was maybe a month long relationship at that and that's it but now looking back it's like yeah that was probably the most i've ever been manipulated in a romantic relationship and it, it's just it's very strange to think that that happens sometimes you know oh, it, it's definitely a thing i mean it, it definitely happens and it, it happens a lot more frequently than people talk about you know it's it and it takes its toll it definitely takes its toll. That's why failures of failures of the flesh exist in the first place. <laughs> yeah. But track three, we have the forgotten one. Soft lips that gave to his severed kiss. You held my hand in yours for one last time. out of your system and and get it out there it, it's been plaguing you for now and it's something that you need to do and it and it, it was definitely probably Soft one of the heaviest things that i've written and kiss. felt you know my yeah. and yours for one last time you know well i, I really do appreciate you. track four which is 
pretty self-explanatory. I know what this is about, but for the sake of, well, if we go over to uh, Spotify, you got 22 monthly listeners. Motherfucker, you should have at least four grand by now. Well, four <laughs> grand, four thousand. That's bullshit. This is why we're doing this podcast because you motherfuckers <laughs> don't know what you're missing. Anyways, um, track four, we got Nocturnal Goddess. Which what is this talking about, bro? If it ain't if it ain't already obvious. <laughs> so it's probably not as obvious as you think it is. Um, to be completely honest, because it actually touched a couple subjects. Um, and the main thing that this one was about lyrically was about um, obviously like having having these these issues particularly like late at night like when most people have issues like thinking about their lives and traumas and etc cetera, etc cetera, you know and they start getting really heavy in their head and thinking about shit um and that's kind of where that came from is the nocturnal goddess playing in my head again you know and, um it was more so about um people that i grew up with um I won't say parents because that's a very subjective term. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, like right, right, right off the rip, the first lines coming into this, you know, are, I won't suffer this anymore. Home is where the heart is. You showed me the door. Um, you know, I felt very, very abandoned from a young age and it, it really fucked me up like growing up the way that I did. But it also made me a stronger person in the long haul, I feel like, because I'm able to be independent now um, and not have that codependency on anybody and not feel like I need somebody. It's just nice. Um, you know, and, and once again, this this one was actually a really heavy one emotionally, lyrically, you know, uh, the pre-breakdown, you know, I saw visuals of who I was and what I've become. It's fucking pitiful. Um, I wonder, do you still think of me because you're plaguing my dreams? And once again, like coming back into the nocturnal thoughts and shit, um, even the end of the song, you know, was very heavy for me because it was, it was meaningful in the sense of like, I'm done with this. This is where it's going, you know? Um, but, uh, you know, was, I'll, I'll bury these problems down deep until these problems will bury me. Um, it's time to break these chains and take back my life. It's time for me to let go of this shit. Everything that's holding me back, everything that's holding me down and anchoring me down emotionally, it was time to just let it go. I didn't need to think about it anymore. I didn't need to be a part of it mentally anymore. I needed to, to grow from the situation, um, both from the other subject matter involved where I wrote a bunch of this about and, and from the way I grew up and shit. And... That's that's a whole ass. I I could do a whole podcast about that. So I'm not even gonna get into that that <laughs> whole fucking rabbit hole of jumping into that shit. Um, so we just won't go there. But um, it was it was a it was a pretty meaningful, pretty meaningful um sentiment behind it. You know, like what I was going for with it. Right. I mean, honestly, how how deep does the rabbit hole go? <laughs> I mean, uh, this is this is your time, dude. Damn, dude, that's a that's a rough one. That's a rough one. Um, I mean, I'll put it in context for you, just as simply spoken as I possibly can. My birthday was Thursday, and neither one of them fucking called me. Mm. <laughs> so that tells you anything. Yeah. Um, and it's 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 a two-way street you know it's always an excuse it's always something and uh you know it's 
the, 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 like I said, there was a meaning behind the date that it was released. The, the date that it was released was a particular date that, that mattered um, to an individual particularly. And my birthday of last year, my birthday week, uh, I don't know if you remember when I had that hearse, the caddy, and uh, my, my hearse, uh, my ex had forged my name off the title while I was at work, um, despite the fact that you know I had money for her to pay off her half of it. Um, not gonna get super heavy into that, whatever. Um, got repoed while I was at work. Um, I just left a project that was getting pretty serious because of some drama that was going on. And uh, both of my parents tried to kill themselves. So all on my birthday week of last year. So I um, don't really, I don't have good memories associated with this time of year, typically. Yeah. And that's yeah. kind of why this was so important for this to come out on the 19th, because it was like, nope, this is happening. It's coming out on this date, because if, the, if that person ever sees that date, they know what it means, and they know why I fucking did it. And, yeah. and that, it, it, it's neither here nor there. Um, right. it, also marks yeah. the one, it also marks the one year anniversary of um, the last time uh, my last major relationship and myself, particularly individual, had spoken. Um, and six months later, they got married, despite the fact that we were trying to work things out. So. Very, right. very, per- very personal EP. Very, yes. you're, you're getting a lot of shit out of me that I don't normally fucking talk about. So, um, and again, I, I appreciate you sharing because I mean, we we more or less we have talked about a good portion of this because despite our distance and whether it has to do with the fucking podcast or not um we've gotten very close because we knew that we have a path to share in the first place um both as brothers and um artistic collaborators and um for every conversation that we've had where it's been me and you just sharing this like very very personal shit um i'm grateful to have the opportunity to continue making brothers along the way um on a more like a a more raw note personally for me and to kind of um emphasize my gratitude dude all the brothers that i've had along the way who have just like kind of fucking just done stupid shit so i've had to cut them off they probably even listen to this podcast still which you know hey i um but you're you're definitely staying over there wherever you are um (laughs) trying yeah like it's it's been very difficult being someone who is as supportive naively optimistic that's always a term i use because it is it's it's a naive almost disney level optimism the same optimism that like had characters like flynn rider become so iconic because they were more realistic in those films right right quite literally i try to live my life like a disney movie because growing up my life kind of felt like a world war ii documentary and that's not to compare it to nazis and the jews or anything like that but just to describe it and compare it as being grim please nobody get the wrong idea i'm not comparing my very privileged very fucking white very okay life to Nazis killing Jews and actual genocide. Just saying it was grim. It was very grim and it was basically a facade. But anyways, I've lost a lot of brothers along the way, not dead, but just having to cut paths with them because they want to do (laughs) stupid shit. So it's, it's been really refreshing to have someone like you who's come along the way and who's kind of like entered in at the right time. And we're like, hey, we both did this and this and this. We like this and this and this. You want to work together? Yeah, let's fucking do it. And we've been talking ever right. since. Like me and Finn people, we're, we're fucking tight. And we're we're making some plans to meet in person. Because like, I can't, I can't handle it anymore, bro. I need to give this dude a hug. <laughs> like, <laughs> need to give this dude a hug, share, share a beer <laughs> or 15 with him. Go up north, go up into the woods. Like you fucking name it, dude. Or just, I definitely want to make it happen sometime this year. Disappear into the void. <laughs> disappear into the void. Exactly. The void that is false giant point up in Black Canyon Lake or something like that. <laughs> um, but dude, it's it's. I'm grateful that you've been willing to share this because I think 
this will also gravitate a lot more authentic raw and um people who are just they're willing to be vulnerable they're willing to like have their walls down and maybe speak about things in their music the same way you're doing with this ep i think it will bring a lot more authentic people into your crowd and therefore you know it might just help blossom a full garden a full flower bed worth of different you know different flowers the flowers being the people and just raw like <laughs> you know fair enough fair enough um so track five this is this is absolutely my favorite track on the ep by the way this is my favorite that's, that's, um, everybody tells me that dude and like it's so it's, good it's it's my favorite too so like that that makes me feel good that i'm like all right i knew i hit one with this one <laughs> yeah so we got here we have track five tears of the wretched What is this one about? So this one, it, 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 it's kind of me taking taking the blame for a lot of shit, but also like once again, like taking that accountability. You know, this is once again the, another excerpt that I put, you would say, towards the end of the end of it, it, like the, the summary of this album. Um, yeah. the line, you know, I'm the fucking disease you didn't want, but the one you need, bury me in your veins. Yeah. Um, you know, this, this song was very, maybe you didn't need what I had at the moment, but I, I left my mark. Um, it's, it's very, I was, I was this person's scapegoat for a lot, you know, um, there was a lot of shit that I talked about, um, in the song actually and a lot of it, it, it it's almost damning myself essentially it's damning myself for like this whole situation um but also at the same time like this was this was what i was trying to do i was trying to fucking bring out this part of this person you know and make make things better i mean um point proven like you know like the the lines let me breathe my sole purpose here was to breed and fill you up with my disease you can view it however you want. You can view me however you fucking want. But, like, if you view me as a disease, then I'm just trying to fill you with my disease. Whether you view it as positive or negative or whatever, you know, and the, 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 the fucking lines, you know, I'm the decay in your bones, the rotting roots spreading through these tones. I am the decay rotting away in this name of agony. I, I, I can't, like, even, even the breakdown, like, Everyone, like, everyone, not the breakdown necessarily, but, like, the, the, the monologue where it was, like, almost spoken word. It had that, like, Duma Borgiri kind of vibe to it that everybody was, like, geeking out about, you know. Um, it, it was a very heavy thing, actually. And, and, and this particular verse I had, I had used before and won't say it published, so I reused it, but it was relevant, you know. Uh you can beg for this to stop. This wasn't the fate that you asked for. You strayed off this path and bit the fruit just to see these gates. Now witness the end of the vile plague that humanity has brought for centuries. It'll flash and imprinting on your feeble minds as the trumpets have been blown. You know, just like going back and like just hammer after hammer after hammer of like, we've been fucking up. We've been fucking up. We've been fucking up like repetitively. Um, the last two lines on that before it goes to the end breakdown of the end of the song or well, the last four lines were, uh, your fragile being dissolves. There's no turning back now. Towards the embers, you'll crawl, and this veil has been lifted. Like, and then goes straight into the breakdown, which was, um, as death compels, you broke the seal. I am the hell. Witness pain in this pure devastation. Like, it 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 was very damning in that sense of like I have always viewed myself as a very 
wretched person because I've been made to feel like that by family, by friends in the past, by ex relationships. And like the people that have actually taken the time to get to know me have, 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 have taken the time to know that like, maybe you're not as bad as you think you are. Maybe you're just a very broken person. Maybe you're just a very emotionally broken person and you've had a very traumatizing fucking life. And maybe you need to take time to like really break this down and like get this out of your system and, and, and do what you need to do. And it's ironic because that's my favorite song on the fucking album too, to date. And uh, probably one of my favorite songs I've ever tracked because that was my way of like breaking down everything. It was like, yes, I'm wretched. And these are the tears I'm shedding for it. This is, this is the pain that I have endured. This is who I am as a person. I'm wretched, but like, I'm still in pain. And that's, that's basically the best way I can work. Yeah, this is the best way you can paraphrase it, which is that works. That's that's completely fine because it, it plays with the words. Everybody loves when you can continue upon the dialogue. You can continue upon the vocabulary that's used in the song name itself and can just continue manipulating it, right? That's that's lyricism. Mm. Uh, so Tears of the Wretched, solid track. I mean, obviously the rest of them are too, but Tears of the Wretched just stands out for me, you know? Um, Track six, we got Martyrs. The last track of Infectorium's first EP. What is this talking about? Martyrs is basically just the acceptance of things. Um, you know, the acceptance of like this could be the end, it could not be the end, whatever. You know, yeah. Core, you know, separate, macerate, I'll end this pain and choose my fate. Um, uh, taking a hard glance through these broken eyes as we embrace this fragile dance in our meaningless lives. Like, there's just so much in this. It, it was really hard. This was the last one we recorded, I believe. And it, it was a very, very heavy, very heavy thing for me because it was just like, you know what? This, this if, if I go tomorrow and I'm a martyr for someone else's fucking trauma or pain that this is the way it's going to be um you know like even the, the outro to it was actually kind of interesting like i did something a little different that little gobliny outro to the song you know uh i hope you can feel this the mental decay or the mental decay devoid of the light mentally cruel pleading for the end awaiting the bleed as we force our broken smiles under the shattered glass we say our final goodbyes to this fucked up world and it was basically just the acceptance of like, if this accepted and like, I'm, you know, day to day, I, I never know, you know, I could, I could fucking get up tomorrow and drive to one of my jobs and get fucking in a car wreck. I could <laughs> all sorts of shit. I mean, you know, one of the situations that happened recently, you know, I had somebody come into the shop and threaten the entire the gun, you know? and. Not not a pleasant feeling, not a pleasant situation, but it, it's never it's never predictable. And everything everything in life, whether we want to admit it or not, everything in life in a situation like that, we are always a martyr for somebody. At that point, you know, we we are sacrificing a part. Like if someone had a bad day, let's say, let's speak for context here. It, it, like you know, let's say for instance, um, take 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 a fucking serial killer. They had a bad fucking childhood so they're going out killing these people because they're trying to compensate for fucked up shit and traumas in their childhood so therefore all these people that they killed became martyrs for this individual at that point to try to compensate for that and that's kind of the way that i took that was like if if these people want to continue to use me and abuse me and treat me like shit or whatever the situation is i've become a martyr for whatever trauma it is that's induced this to begin with and whether I accepted the fate or not, you know, 
is a different story. Whether I wanted it to be like that to begin with is another story. But regardless, that was what was going on. And that was kind of my way of like, like compartmentalizing that in my head was like, you know what, this sucks. I don't want to be a martyr for someone anymore. I don't want to be a, a, a scapegoat anymore. I just want to, I want to move forward with my life. And even if that means I have to put on a fucking fake smile and pretend like everything has ever in, been okay in my life, you know, and, and right. continue on, um, for lack of better words. And that's, that's basically what that, what that boils down to in a nutshell. Um, it's, 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 it's a weird analogy. <laughs> of that. No. It, it's a weird analogy of the way I've tried to break this down to people. Like it's, it's so hard. Like my roommates, very supportive love what i do you know they, they they get a kick out of it every time i come back and i'm like oh i did something new and they're like oh sweet what is it you know like not really they're not really their vein of music personally but you know they're very supportive of it and I, I i'm super jazzed that like certain people can relate and when i share lyrical content with them like one in particular really relates really hard more so than the other and uh it's always like dude that just that hits me in ways that like i can't even put into words at this point right now and that's really why I started doing music to begin with, was because of that. Because I remember growing up and listening to certain bands and certain songs, and I'm like, I relate to this. Like, yeah. fuck, you know, like someone else feels this way. Like, and I didn't feel quite so alone. So that's kind of why I started doing this and, and like touching on certain subjects. Like, you know, we, we live in a very stigmatized society. Nobody wants to talk about mental health, nobody wants to talk about abuse you know and unless it's you know in a subject matter that fucking you know promotes whatever end of the fucking spectrum they fucking fall on nobody wants to talk about it and, and the point of this that i'm getting at is like it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what either end of it you come from none of that shit's relevant abuse is abuse getting treated like shit is getting treated like shit growing up and having traumas is growing up and having traumas how you choose to handle that it, uh, that's what falls on you yeah you know? and 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 that's why i chose the musical outlet and the artistic outlet and, and, and many shapes and forms because it, it made sense it yeah. made i didn't want to spend the rest of my life like taking these traumas and taking them out on people and shit and and walking around with a chip on my fucking shoulder all the time and, and like there's cer still certain things that are very touchy with me to where i'll like i'll clam up and dissociate i'm like you know what nope we're done talking <laughs> i'm just out yeah you know? um and sometimes i feel like i dodged a bullet and sometimes i, I feel like i could have handled it better you know sometimes i was right and sometimes i was wrong but that's the most important thing that i think a lot of people forget is like People, people are people. Behind that picture, that profile picture, that name, whether it's their real name or a stage name, constant name, whatever, it doesn't matter. Like, they're still a person and they've had a life. And when it really comes down to it, at the end of your life, the only thing that we really have it, it is what we're remembered for, two dates and a dash. Yeah. Dash represents so many years, experiences, memories, that they can't chisel on a fucking piece of rock. And that's why this meant so much to me to do this, 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 oh, you know? Yeah.